Observing its movements for 24 hours, it was confirmed that it was indeed a planet. So Neptune's not following all the laws of gravity that from all the other planets in the sun? Neil deGrasse Tyson sat staring at a screen most people would call ordinary, with rows of tiny numbers and a dull green graph ticking across black. But for him, this was the edge of something that shouldn't exist. Voyager 2, drifting near Neptune's ghostly blue haze, had just fed him a puzzle even he couldn't hide his shock from. NASA called it a flyby routine, just just another icy checkpoint before Voyager drifted into the dark, but Tyson called it impossible. It didn't add up. As his eyes fixed on the magnetometer's needle, a reading that should have stayed flat suddenly twitched, then jumped. Something under Neptune's clouds was alive in a way the textbooks never mentioned. The deeper Voyager drifted, the more Neptune seemed to fight back, forcing us to ask, are there any textbooks or physics professors that can prepare us for what lies beneath that blue swirl? If you dare to find out Tyson's terrifying discovery, hit like and subscribe. Long before Voyager 2 brushed the icy winds of Neptune, every science classroom painted the same picture of the planet as the quiet one. A pale blue dot, 30 times farther from the sun than Earth, too cold and distant to surprise anyone. Voyager 2 was never even supposed to last long enough to get there. Launched in 1977, it was built to swing by Jupiter, then Saturn, then Uranus, ticking off the solar system's biggest planets like stamps in a cosmic passport. By 1989, when it finally reached Neptune, the mission team expected a calm, stable ice giant. Nothing prepared them for what was to come. The assumptions were simple. Because a planet 17 times the mass of Earth, swirling with winds we'd glimpsed through telescopes, should be 1,300 miles per hour at most. But its magnetic fields should have been steady, just like Uranus, maybe even weaker, with predictable lines hugging the poles, the sort of thing a magnetometer would record half asleep. Back then, Neptune was a distant, blurry dot in every classroom chart, the cold, predictable sibling hiding in the dark corners of our solar family. But when Voyager arrived, that calm mask began to shatter, and the first crack began to appear in the magnetic heartbeat of the planet. What caused this crack, and more horrifyingly, what did it reveal? The first real jolt of Voyager near Neptune didn't come from a dramatic storm or a rogue moon. It came from the numbers on a tiny magnetic sensor. Instead of finding a polite Earth Earth-like field, the probe's magnetometer caught Neptune's magnetic axis twisted at a jaw-dropping 47 degrees off its rotation. For context, Earth's magnetic field tilts only about 11 degrees, just enough to nudge a compass needle, but nothing wild. Uranus, which Voyager passed before Neptune, had already surprised scientists with a tilted field. But this? This was in a league of its own. Imagine waking up one morning to find Earth's north and south poles have slid halfway down the map. Magnetic north suddenly sitting somewhere over Florida. Magnetic south drifting near Western Australia. That's the kind of tilt Voyager found. And that was just the beginning. When Tyson first saw that raw reading, he later admitted it was like finding your compass pointing underground, then spinning sideways. It wasn't just tilted. The entire magnetic field was off-center, not aligned with Neptune's core. Instead, it wobbled around the planet like a loose wheel, refusing to settle. Every model of how planets build and hold magnetic fields broke under this contradiction. Something was generating this lopsided energy, but it wasn't acting like any magnetic dynamo scientists had mapped before. In physics, that shouldn't work, yet Voyager kept proving it did, and the deeper the probe drifted into Neptune's swirling blue winds, the more those secrets refused to stay buried. Was that intentional or by chance? The tilted magnetic field should have been enough to make anyone question what Neptune's really hiding. But as Voyager crept closer, the planet seemed to peel back more of its mask, and each layer was stranger than the last. It began with the winds. Out there on a frozen giant that barely feels the sun, Voyager clocked wind speeds topping 1,300 miles an hour, the fastest ever measured in our entire solar system. That means Neptune's winds were roaring faster than Jupiter's legendary Great Red Spot, a storm that's raged for centuries. How does an ice giant so far from the sun whip up storms strong enough to tear through steel? It's like a hurricane that never loses strength, spinning endlessly through a place that should be dead calm. The winds don't swirl here and there. They wrap around the entire planet like a restless belt till you can't help but wonder. If Neptune can spin storms like that, what's stirring them up from below? Voyager didn't have to wait long for the next piece of the puzzle. Floating across the planet's blue face was the Great Dark Spot, a vast, swirling storm almost the size of Earth. 
Before Voyager got close, this dark blemish was nothing more than a rumor, a fuzzy shadow seen through distant telescopes. But now, in crisp detail, scientists were able to see a vortex spinning like an open wound that refused to heal. Neil deGrasse Tyson once said, it's like watching a wound that never heals. When the original spot vanished, another sprang up elsewhere, as if the planet itself refused to sit still. It makes you wonder, what lies under those clouds that keeps breathing these storms back to life? Then came the surprise that made even the storms look simple. Voyager's infrared readings revealed Neptune glows from the inside, radiating about 2.6 times more heat than it gets from the distant sun. Think about that. How can a frozen world orbiting so far from our star that daylight is just a whisper somehow manage to burn with a hidden furnace deep below its blue haze? It's like finding an ice cube that glows from the inside out. Some theories say maybe leftover heat from when the planet formed still bubbles up. Others think powerful tides churn inside, squeezing its core like a stress ball. But none of those ideas quite add up, because no one ever predicted an internal furnace under an ice giant this far from the sun. Just when the mission team thought Neptune had run out of tricks, Voyager's cameras picked up something that made its history feel even stranger, rings. For years, some astronomers thought Neptune might have them, but they were so faint that Earth-based telescopes could barely catch a hint. Voyager proved they were real, thin, dark, patchy rings circling the planet like old scars. Physics says ice giants shouldn't have rings like this, but Neptune doesn't care. Where could the rings come from? These ghostly loops look like fingerprints smeared on glass, clues that Neptune's past might be messier than we ever imagined. Maybe ancient moons smashed apart, maybe cosmic collisions scattered debris that never escaped. Either way, the planet wears these dusty halos like a reminder that it keeps its secrets close. When you line it all up, the tilting magnetic field, the roaring winds, the storms that don't die, the glow from deep inside, and those thin, bruised rings, it doesn't feel random. It feels like a puzzle we're only beginning to see, but don't have the means to solve. Neptune isn't just a frozen ball of gas drifting quietly on the edge of our neighborhood. It's a storm generator, a furnace, a keeper of old collisions and new scars. So maybe the real fear isn't just in what Voyager saw, but in what it didn't. What else might be hiding right beneath those clouds? After Voyager slipped past Neptune's ghostly storms and ghost rings, it left scientists and Tyson himself with more questions than answers. Because if this planet can bend the rules we trust, then maybe the truth is even stranger than the puzzles we see on the surface. So what could explain Neptune's wild magnetic tilt, its storms that never die, and its warmth glowing from deep inside? The first theory tries to keep us grounded. Maybe it's all hidden in water. Some researchers believe there could be super pressurized oceans buried deep inside Neptune. Rivers trapped under layers of gas and ice, swirling so powerfully they twist the planet's magnetic field like taffy. It's like rivers running under miles of ice, stirring the planet's core. It's a neat idea, but it doesn't explain everything. If these oceans are there, why do they spin the field off center, tilting it almost sideways? And why does the heat keep rising, as if something deeper is pushing energy up to the clouds? The next theory goes further into the realm of the unknown. Some astrophysicists wonder if Neptune's core interacts with dark matter. In theory, dark matter slips through planets without leaving a trace. It's like a ghost, invisible, untouchable, but holding galaxies together. So what if out here on the edge of our solar system, dark matter is clinging to Neptune in ways we don't understand? Could it twist fields, heat the core, bend storms into impossible shapes? Then there's the idea people almost don't even whisper, the one that makes scientists shift in their chairs. What if Neptune's magnetic flips and storms are not natural at all? A few voices, fringe but not silent, have suggested these magnetic anomalies could be the signs of something designed. Maybe an ancient cosmic generator, hidden inside the ice giant, humming away for reasons we can't see. Even Tyson once said, half joking but half serious, I'd never say aliens lightly, but Neptune does things that feel designed. And really, who could blame him? When a frozen planet behaves like an unsolvable equation, how do we know what's off limits to guess at? But the final theory pulls us somewhere even colder. Neptune might not be just a chaotic swirl of storms and gases. It might be conscious and aware in a way we can't measure. Some researchers have wondered if the planet's storms, rings, and shifting fields are more like a self-regulating heartbeat. Not just random weather, but a kind of defense system or memory built into the planet itself. Because if Neptune can hide its truth for 4 billion years, what else lurks in the dark? 
One battered probe gave us this glimpse, and then drifted on, so the question clings to the back of the mind, unshakable. If Voyager could uncover all this with a single flyby, what else it would find if we ever dared to dig deeper? When Neil deGrasse Tyson first saw the raw data Voyager sent home, even he had to pause. A planet we once thought of as just a frozen blue marble turned out to be something that tilts, spins, and pulses in ways we can't easily explain. Tyson said it himself, The moment I saw the data, I realized Neptune isn't the planet we thought. It's something alive with secrets. Put it all together and you start to feel it too. It's not just the magnetic flips, the roaring storms, or the hidden warmth that makes Neptune so unsettling. It's the fact that none of it adds up, yet all of it connects. And here's the truth that leaves the hair standing up on your arms. Even today, decades later, no probe has returned to see if Voyager was wrong or terrifyingly right. And if Neptune's storms are hiding more than we can see, it makes us wonder, are they done watching us yet? Voyager's quick flyby was supposed to be a final check mark on the edge of our solar system. A kind of cold goodbye to a cold world. But instead, it left us with the sense that we'd brushed against something far more complicated than we ever expected. A planet we once scribbled into textbooks as just another ice giant turned out to be a shifting puzzle box, humming with forces, secrets, and winds that never die. Tyson's shock still rings in our heads. We think we know our own backyard, but space never stops rewriting the rules. So maybe the real questions are, what if Neptune is just the beginning, and who's really watching who?